Yeah, so anyway, yesterday I went to go and get my fortune read, you know, I thought to myself, I'm sick of this job, I'm sick of this little flat bit of square concrete that I'm working on, you know, and that's just my drive. My drive. My drive. I think my wife's having an affair, you know, I think I've lost my natural birthright, I think I'm losing my hair. You know, my car won't start in the mornings when it starts to rain, and I'm just thinking to myself, well, hey, maybe I need some future reading here, you know? So I said to Bob at the factory, he said, I'm, I'm gonna go down. It's this guy that I know. You know, I've heard about it. Maybe I, I read it in a book or something, I don't know, but you know, apparently he knows the future, and uh, well, you know, I'd like to know what the future brings for me and my happy home. So, uh, yeah, so anyway, I went down there. I said hi, you know, I've come to get my future ready, he goes, I know your future, I'm a fortune teller. And I'm like, well, you know, is this the American dream or what? So, he goes, Steve, it's Steve, right? And I'm like, well, yeah. Okay, so this isn't a cheap trick show. You can tell my name, you know, it's, it's probably still written in my shirts. You know, my wife, she used to sew those things on and, you know, talk about my socks for me and that kind of thing. You know, it's probably on the back of my underpants right now. But, so anyway, he says, Steve, I, I know you. You came here last week. Uh, I sold you a wristwatch. I'm like, well, you know, Charlie, because that's his name, Charlie, the, the fortune teller. You know, I don't wear a wristwatch, and if I'd come here last week, I'd remember that. You know, my life's not so packed full of amazing, interesting activities that I wouldn't remember coming to the fortune teller and buying a wristwatch. And he says, well, Steve, take a look at your arm. So, you know, so I dive, you know, I roll up my shirt. I'm like, you know, I don't wear a watch. You know, what is this, some kind of kind of cheap trick show, huh? Huh? So I look at my wrist, I look at my wrist, and what do I see? What do I see? I see a big gold lame wristwatch. Fake. Yeah. You know, I don't even like those kind of watches, you know. I'm like, where the fuck did this come from, Mac? You know, I called him Mac, even though his name is Charlie, but... So, he goes, well, Steve, my real name is, in fact, Charlie the Archangel, and, uh... <laughs> you know, I had to change my depot. I thought it sounded kind of sexy like that. But anyway, I can tell futures, and uh, what I can tell is that you're a depressed man. You're probably going to jump off the bridge tonight when I tell you this stuff that I'm going to tell you. And I'm like, what? You know, you know, I'm not one of those kind of melancholic guys that just kind of rolls into these kind of things and just dies. And he goes, well, Steve, I'm sleeping with your wife. Uh, you're losing your hair. Your dodge won't start. He knew it was a dodge. I mean, how did he know that, you know? So, uh, uh, we're leaving town to tomorrow. That's today, by the way. <laughs> well, you know, I bet he was really laughing when I said fire to his fucking house. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, I bet he was laughing a lot, you know, in the hallway when I cooked him supper. You know, when his arms were all tied up and that, you know. That must have really made him angry, you know. But the thing about being a fortune teller is you can always tell the future. And, you know, I always like to place my trust in something I can't see because... You know, it's a bit like a fuel injection unit. You know what's there, it gives you confidence. So, uh, I told him, well, you can have the wristwatch back. I, I didn't like imitations anyway.